thank you for coming. It's important for us. Um, thank you for, for your desire to learn uh, something new about email, machine learning, AI, um, Pacman, React Stream. So this is a mix of everything. And uh, we would like to start like, to, 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 to save your time in order to make this conference really a productive for you. We want to wanna start with important question for whom this talk, so in just in case you'll be able to, to change your decision, to change your mind and go for a parallel talk just in case. Okay, so this talk is really about those of you who are curious about machine learning and artificial intelligence, and also about better coding approach to solve problems in ML and AI. And then also, if you are curious too about distributed systems, concurrent systems, this is also for you. So basically, um, it, it's worth to say in advance that we are not a big experts in uh, machine learning and AI. We started looking into that field. We started writing, trying to write an agent for, for playing this multiplayer Blackman game, and we ended up with, sense, with something that we would like to share with you. So you may ask some, some question, but sometimes we won't be able to answer like too deep machine learning question just in case. I'm curious, how many of you are uh, kind of machine learning or AI developers or in, the, in, in that area or field? Okay, just a couple of questions, uh, a couple of folks. Yep. Perfect. So I hope this will be useful for, for anyone in any case. That's right. All right, uh, let's, let's uh, introduce ourselves. My name is Oleg. I am from Kyiv, from Ukraine. I work for Netify, doing reactive streams, uh, reactive programming on a daily basis, contributor to Project Reactor, our socket project. So I've done something related in the area of reactive streams and reactive programming, and I will be able to share some, some insights on that just in case you'll be curious about that as well. Today, we, uh, yeah, I wrote a book. Just in case you're curious about reactive programming in, in Spring, let me know, and I'm going to share it for free with anyone who's going to pin me. I mean, PDF version of it. All right, today with me, Mary. Mary? So, yeah, so again, my name is Mary Grigleski. I'm from Chicago, and I'm a developer advocate at IBM uh, by day, my day job. Then by night, I'm actually a community organizer in Chicago. So I'm a, on the Chicago Java Users Group uh, on the board, and also a few other like IBM meetups that um, Anatole uh, spoke to you about. So yeah, that's primarily me. So. Yeah, so this is our team, and let's talk a little bit about our agenda. So basically, let me say what we are going to cover today. First of all, we are going to talk why Pac-Man and why this, uh, this kind of game is still uh, up to date after 30 years of like uh, after, after 30 years of the first intro for, for into, this, uh, into this field. Then we are going to talk about which machine learning approaches you can apply today in order to, to let your uh, Pac-Man play the game uh, without the human. And finally, we are going to talk why reactive streams and why it's used good for, for this field as well. Uh, for this field as well, uh, as well and uh, we are going to, to take a look at some coda and doing some, some live coding as well. So this is the plan. Sounds good? Yeah, perfect. Let's start. Thank you. So basically, why Pac-Man, Murray? That's right. So basically, Pac-Man, yes, it's came out since, what, the 70s? Arcade game, very popular. Um, it's actually, we all get addicted to it, you know, if you're already like, born in that era. So um, as such, too, Pac-Man, we all know, is a lot of undeterministic behavior, right? We don't know where the ghosts and the Pac-Man will, will be working. So it's a perfect candidate for using like, machine learning kind of algorithms to try to solve that problem. Um, and also, yeah, it's such a good field for AI and ML research. And then basically, too, from a computation perspective, it's actually it's, it's also very, um, it wouldn't say like very easy, but it's a good, again, very good candidate for like solving problems and kind of learning about these machine learning algorithms and using this particular use so case scenario. So you basically mean that it doesn't, doesn't require you to run like, uh, to have like a super, super big mainframe and run like a terabyte of memory and stuff like this, and you don't require to have a cluster of machine in order to teach, to, to run some uh, AI or machine learning technique. That's, that's All right, correct. sounds good. And I guess it's even more uh, interesting why Pac-Man. Uh, even today we have a competitions for uh, like Pac-Man versus cost team, which is cool. Like the people write an algorithm and uh, trying to, 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 to write the best uh, AI or machine learning like model, agent, which gonna win 
uh, this game, this competition with the highest score. So even today, every year annually, they are running this competition in order to figure out whether there is new researches and new foundings in, in, that, in that area, which is pretty cool. That's right. So, but yeah, so it's such, it's, if we have already been doing it for so long, is the problem solved? Yeah, it is, why is it not solved? Yeah, sounds, sounds like it's, like it, it is going to run for a couple of years and most probably most of the algorithm and technique has already been developed for playing the like static game, like the, this just plain level at Pac-Man where you have like a particular number of pills, particular number of players or cost in the, in the game. So most probably you can build some predicted model and so forth and so on. And the game is not evolving dynamically. Uh, I think like for this case, uh, we can't find anything or we can't uh, build something new. That's why, why not to go a little bit further? Why not to try to build, for example, distributed system or multiplayer version of the same Pac-Man and try to find out which machine learning algorithm can play it without like pre-built -pre model and so forth and so on. So what we've tried to do, what we've tried to build is basically a uh, browser game where you have one server, so this server returns an HTML page. Um, it returns all the required information, so you don't have to request more, uh, like to, to do redundant requests from, from, from the client side. On the other hand, like you can simply start playing by saying, I'm Oleg, and it's return, going to return you the, the config, the, the current state of, for our players. And then we decided to implement it to go the, the, the simplest way, the simplest path, and we decided to, okay, the simplest Plus, what we can do in distributed system to, to notify about our actions is to basically send uh, a location update. So I'm at this point, at this point, at this point, all the time. So it's kind of stream from the client. So we have this kind of streaming of data. And at the same time, in order to make this game uh, a little bit live and real time, we are listening for the same stream of others, for others kind of client who are pushing data or streaming data to, to the server so the server can send the updates of the same information to, to our client and in this way make this game uh, alive. And finally, in order to make it like, interesting for everyone, competitive, uh, we have a scoreboard. So the main idea of every human in this game, uh, in this game is to, to get the highest score as, as well as the same goal we, we put as the main goal for, for our agents, like to get the highest score and uh, be there for, for the longest period of time. So that's basically what we, we created. Like Ghost is uh, try to, to catch Pac-Man and uh, of course Pac-Man try to, to earn more peels. And that's what we've got. So far, uh, this is multiplayer dynamic game where we have like um, unpredicted number of ghosts which make it much more interesting from machine learning perspective. So then I'm curious what machine learning algorithm can we apply here in order to, to build an agent for, for such type of game. Oh, sure. And basically, first of all, let's try to play it together because this is important to make sure that it's working. Uh, you have this uh, QR code, so you can simply scan it using your phone, or you can follow the short link, uh, like ESGD or socket, whatever. Basically, once you're going to follow this link, you will be able to see, to observe this interface. You have to put your, your name, or you don't. And you will be able to connect, basically, every of the player will be cost. Because we are trying to build an agent for, for Pac-Man, right? So this is our main goal. That's why every, every human will be ghost and will be trying to catch Pac-Man. And the, the goal of the Pac-Man will be to survive here. So far, we don't have any implementations. That's why we have only ghosts. And it's not that interesting. So let's, let's talk a little bit about machine learning algorithms then. So yeah, so now we're talking about um, designing um, controllers for Pac-Man. So there are the different approaches. So let's kind of take a quick look at the, all the options. So first of all, like a rule-based kind of um, uh, um, uh, approach, um, essentially is using like if-then controls. So can you imagine then it, it's as such, it requires you to have very heavy like domain knowledge of you know where the location is, what is the state, and what will be the next state, and all that stuff. So you can imagine that maybe it's not very practical because then you have to like know a lot ahead of time and it, it basically can exhaust the memory as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I guess like in our case, since we have pretty dynamic game, we are not, uh, we don't know how many players do we have and most probably rule-based approach won't work very well, in, especially for distributed multiplayer game. That's correct. 
So then there's another approach is a Monte Carlo tree search. So as such, yeah, Monte Carlo is you basically do sampling. So as such, to you like sample like some certain um, you know data that you want to like run through. So you do need to run all of them like through to the end. But in order to achieve like more accurate kind of outcome that comes out of it, you do need to run many samples. So as such, too, it requires a large amount of sampling. And also, yeah, as such, you know, it's, if it's a simple game, like one player, one agent, one Pac-Man, one ghost, then maybe it's okay. But if you have like distributed systems over the network and then having like multiple agents and, and such, then it may be also an issue too. So as I understood, like, like this method is like you generate a vector of random actions because you have a finite, finite like state. You have like a beginning of the level, you have the end of the level, and you have to generate a no random number of actions in order to just pass it, and you randomly generate them, generate them, then you generate them uh, until you got the best result. Okay. So that's what's happening, all right. Yeah, so that's not a choice. And another uh, choice would be to do is an evolutionary algorithm. So we're getting more into this AI space, doing like genetic programming or grammatical evolution. So as such, genetic programming too is more heuristic too. You're like a mimicking, like human kind of like you learn as you like apply your techniques over it. So you again also have to like run it many times and kind of like derive at, at your... Um, at, at the outcome that you want wanted from. So basically, it's pretty as I understand, it's pretty similar to method Monte Carlo, mm -hmm. unless you just generate the first uh, random number of actions and then you try to fork at some random point and try okay whether this fork will be better and then you fork again and from from random space uh, like point of your generated run uh, vector of actions and try again and by doing that all the time you get like this kind of tree of random actions. That's right. All right. And then also it requires also a large amount of domain, domain knowledge too. Okay, yeah. So, so no, it, it, basically, it basically doesn't suit really well for, for dynamic game for where we don't have like a particular goal. Like, right. And since this is online game, it won't fit for, for, for such approach. That's correct. All right. So now, and if we get a little fancier into this artificial neural network, so let's just take a quick look. Essentially, we are Im imitating neurons, how it works, right? So basically, it's here I talk about is basically you want to arrive at some universal functional approximations. But let's take a look. So here, this is like in picture. It's probably a picture worth a thousand words. So it's basically you have to compute, add all the neurons together, and then basically then add it to your weight. And then the weight then will have to like do all these computation inside, then it arrives at an output. Um, and let's take a little closer look too into all these things in a bit closer picture. So neurons, add them all up and basically apply the weight. And basically then all of them kind of converge and multiply by some bias. Then you have another activation function and, and then you arrive at your output. So isn't that like an overkill for doing just Pac-Man? Yeah, right? for, for, yeah. for so. me it sounds too complex and for me it sounds like I have to use Python <laughs> and I'm Java developer. I don't like Python. <laughs> That's why maybe let's try to avoid it because it's too heavy for, for our simple case. That's Okay, so now another thing just for sake of like complexity, well, there's new neuroevolutionary approach, which is essentially a combination of the previous two. We talk about uh, um, neuro neural networks and also the evolutionary algorithms. So as such too, it's also not a very, you know, easy to implement kind of solution. And basically it's, we kind of say, no, it's not fit for what we need. Yeah, sounds too that, complex. So right. do we have anything else? That's right. So like in machine learning, right, there's supervised and unsupervised. So somewhere in between in this decision that helps us to do will be a reinforcement learning. So using that and Q learning, that's what we have kind of come up with. So essentially it's basically take an action of an agent for lack of like a teacher. So you have an agent, take the action and basically action feeds it into the environment and then the environment will evaluate, comes back with an observed environment. And that also gives you the outcome and that's essentially the outcome is what we use for um, storing it as a knowledge base and then be used for future like decision making as well. Yeah, this so. sounds like we can continuously, progressively like educate our agent over the time along with real Obviously. players. So let's go deeper in this in the like in the that's reinforcement right. and key learning and let's figure out whether we can apply for our case. Sure. So yeah, so let's take a look then into like um, 
deeper into reinforcement learning. So as such, there are like three areas, right? We all know it's like decision. We want to try to make, and basically decision, you make some decision that's action, um, then the action feeds into the environment that will actually produce an outcome. The outcome also comes with a reward, right? That some value that comes back. So based on the value, you basically all of these, you store them um, into your knowledge base. All so, right, let's stop. Let's do everything step by step. Can you explain what is the de decision in, in basic, in sure. a sense? Sure. So like say in this particular case, right, when you start like your, your system and there's nothing yet, you know, no, no knowledge store. But in this case, if you look into it, so we try to make a decision. So look at the Pac-Man right now is either take a, take a left or take a right in this particular case. So we kind of random. So we decide to, okay, let's take a right. So the, the idea is that like since we are at initial state, we, we, haven't had, like, we haven't had a chance to get any noise so far, we are doing some random decision then, right? That's correct. Okay. So this and since we have like two dimension game that we have only option up, down, light, right, right, left, but in, in this current state, we have only two options. That's why we randomly choose right, for example. Right. Okay, this makes sense. Yeah, so now in this case, we take a right. And then next thing is that you see that it moves right, then it's actually nothing blocked, it, it, takes, it took a pill. So the pill itself is, is gain you some points. So for that, that's already the outcome. Comes back and actually score. Score you, like say, in this case, and, uh, 10 points. So that's like the reward. So you see that you kind of score the point, um, and that's a reward for you that kind of gets feedback, feedback into your knowledge base, and that, that's what it is. Um, All right, so it basically, like, since we got, like, we observed the situ situation, we got some outcome, and in this case, since we got some, some point, this is, uh, like, a positive outcome. That's so how to build, then, like, how to gather these all things together, then? Okay, so let's see, right? So if you, basically, you're, you're making decision, and there's an outcome, you get your points, and then, basically, um, it adds, it, it puts it into the knowledge, um, repository that can actually, this knowledge base can then be used for future decision making. So well. basically, the basically knowledge is, is a combination of decision at particular state plus the outcome that we observe. That's All right. right. Yeah. So that makes sense. Okay. So how then we can reuse it afterwards? Okay. So in this case, if you look into this, then basically you see your knowledge base. So you come right. to making a decision, you basically can then reference to see where your that particular state you, you need to, when you're in that state, you need to try to make a decision where what to do at that point. You can look up your your knowledge will actually feed into your decision making process. Right. So yeah, so in this case we'll be in here. So you mean like we have a knowledge base and, and we can take a look at the current state and then try to find similar state in our knowledge base and reuse the same action yes. in order to not randomly make the next decision as we've done before, but reuse the knowledge, like the positive knowledge that we, we observed previously doing the same action. That's All right, that yes. makes sense. Okay. So um, from my point of view, I see a little problem here. I, I would say I, I will call it a little problem, but in fact, let's, talk, let's think a little bit about our knowledge base. As you may notice, uh, the state is basically a combination of all of the peels on the maps plus your your apartment position. So every time you move, the state will be gen the state will be totally different from the previous one because we have like a totally new kind of uh, uh, the t totally new number of peels just in case, or we just eaten the the peel and now we have the next number of uh, peels and we are taking into account all of the peels on the map. So doing that, we have like many, many cases and many, many different states. But this is just the beginning. In our game, we have more than just Peels and Pac-Mans. We have like other ghosts. And adding just single ghosts to our, to our state, we will multiply the number of possible uh, states to almost to the huge, in, in, like insane number of, of uh, like states. And in our case, we have even worse case because we have totally varying number of ghosts. And now you can imagine that we are trying to collect all the unique states. So we will end up with something like that. And this is just the beginning. Basically, we, will, we won't be able to fit all the possible states in the memory. And the main question, whether it makes any sense to put everything in memory and waste our, our cap system capacity at all doing that. So do we have any other solution for kind of reduce the number of, of possible states? Sure. So there's this one research that we came to find out is using reinforcement learning with a case-based reasoning approach. So... Let's take a look. So for case-based reasoning, it's basically you have your knowledge, 
and over here you, you have your knowledge and then you... So it's pretty similar to reinforcement learning then, right? That's correct. It's, right. it's similar. However, it actually takes a, a bit more of an efficient approach because what it's trying to do is find some similarities. You, so basically, yes, in, in, the, in the normal case is that you store the knowledge, is that location, you, the state, and like what it will be, and all the effect, and then you basically then determine it based on the, that existing environment, so, but so, we can... So it's tried to find, uh, to, to adopt the existing knowledge for, for similar cases. For, for a similar right. case. So in this case, you could be like, okay, this Bankman is gonna, like we focus on what's necessary. Is it going to take a right or take a left, for example, like that, that kind of, you drill down to what is the essential and basically find that similarities. So in that case then you basically you apply a more like a, a KISS rule, is keep it keep it simple, like a kind of rule to kind of like to, to solve this problem. So, so it basically it basically means that instead of keeping the total state of of, uh, of the whole game, uh, you're trying to find the most important information in this state, which is more comparable between each other. Uh, All right. That's correct, yes. So that's what the case-based reinforcement approach. Um, and over here, and basically, too, again, like you find that, then you apply again this reinforcement learning um, kind of pro approach, the Q learning, then you, yeah, essentially, because of this, um, you're finding like overlapping some right. area. So in that case, you, you make it a more efficient in your whole um, storing. So basically, aspect. as I understood, so. when, when it's possible to adopt, you're adopting, otherwise you're creating a, a, new, yeah. a new knowledge and improve, for example, an existing one in case you're adopting it. That's and in that case, you're kind of evol doing evolution over the time, as well as trying to learn something new. That's All right, yeah. and in, in, since you're adopting, you are keeping the, the, this kind of the finite number of states in, in the memory, and you yeah. don't yeah. overwhelm. Uh, your computer okay. by redundant states. All right, that's that's, right. that's much better. Yeah. Okay. So let's summarize okay. the stuff. Okay, we'll do a quick summary. So for case uh, case based learning is basically essentially provide you with a continuous learning in re uh, with reinforcement learning, and also is really an uh, like a re reinforcement learning improvement to over the strictly the traditional way of doing re reinforcement learning. Okay. Okay, so then, well, how about this, right? Like, we're, we're, in this case, we're also going to be bringing in reactive streams. So how does reactive streams going to help us in terms of um, enabling, like, a machine learning kind of pipeline um, in this case? So um, let's, let's yeah, kind of that's, examine Yeah, that's a good it question. Why yeah. reactive streams... Uh, why reactive streams is mentioned there at all? So basically, let's let's talk a little bit about the the, 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 the way we are doing the game at all. First of all, the game itself is is a number of action which we are uh, trying to control. For example, it doesn't matter whether it's human or like agent or some algorithms for doing that. But in any case, the the, the controlling is some serious or actually a stream of actions which you produce from, from your joystick or from, from any, I don't know, your keyboard to, to, to the, for example, your computer. And in one case, like in the most simplest case, like you're running everything within a local machine. So you just connected a new hardware uh, to your computer and everything happens almost immediately, right? If there is no latency in between. Like you, 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 you click the button and it's appeared immediately on your screen. So everything happens on time. However, like, like, because of that, we are writing the code like this. We are using pool model instead of like, listening to the events because it's pretty sim simple. It's like, as I said, uh, we observe events immediately once it ha they happen. And that's why we can simply do iteration over the time, like looping, 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 and in checking what, is, what, what was the latest action. And because of that, it could just simply work. On the other hand, once we try to build like a distributed system, like the system which is working over the network, the one we are trying to, to, to the one we implemented, uh, in our case, like multiplayer version of Pac-Man, all the action are sent over the wire. It means that they're going to be delayed a little bit, and the action will, will the next one will be a little bit postponed, and your Pac-Man can go just over your screen just in case and do something you didn't expect uh, it to do which is not that good. And basically, in this case, what would you like to, to implement most probably? You would like to react instead of just proactively doing actions and checking what was the last. So instead of pulling, you would 
prefer to maybe use push mechanism or some streaming mechanism using some prepared libraries, for example, like Project Reactor. Let's take a look at this piece of code. In this case, we are listening to a stream, and we have like a proper operator like handle or map in order to react to incoming action. And as a result, we are going to execute the, the logic within our function. So we are providing not a logic, we are providing a function with some logic. The function itself will be invoked only when we got some particular action, and we are going to execute this um, the logic only when we, we are clear to understand that player like keeping keeping the button and we are receiving the constant stream of, uh, of movement or he decided to, to do anything else, which means that we can, uh, we can Safely, safely do logic only when we observe the, the action. Yeah, we have to skip this slide, I guess, because this is, this one is pretty, oops, I apologize. Yeah. So basically, reactive streams fit very well because it works really well even in local, on local machine as well as on this in distributed over network uh, case. Uh, as I said, Pacman controller is a sync stream of messages, so we have Streams here and streams there, which means that they should be compatible with each other. And even more, if you're going to look at reactive streams, you'll see that this is a standardized set of interfaces. And it means that we can use any libraries which are compatible which is with each other. And we can write, for example, our browser logic using one reactive streams library implementation and do the server in a different one. And they will be just communicating on the same language with the same specification, which is good. Because reactive streams has this publisher, subscriber, subscription. And a part of that, it has back pressure, which is yes. useful for, for some yes. distributed cases as well. Yes. So basically, let's take a look at some demo and let's take a look how our API would look like if we if we gonna use reactive streams approach for example All right let me close this so basically this is our application in our case we have this processing logic uh, it provides us with some decision service decision decision service is basically a stream of actions it could be a remote like controller from browser as well as uh, it could be some implementation of AI. It's just interface which, which, which returns stream. It, it's pretty useful because if it's local, then it's gonna be working pretty efficient without any problem. If it's distributed, then we won't do any, any redundant actions without, uh, without particular, per particular decision That's right. b b before that. Yeah. So what we can do is that, basically, First of all, since everything is, is uh, starting from controlling or making decision, we can say, okay, decision service, let's do a decision. And decision is a stream, so we can do any magic because this is project reactor. The same you can do with Ariki Java 2, it doesn't matter. It's just implementation, which is work on top of reactive streams, which is good for us. So basically what we want to do, once we observe the, the action, we most probably want to run a game engine. And if you're going to look at game engine interface, we will see that game engine interface receives the flux of decision and returns the, the flux of outcomes. It basically means that uh, the game engine transforms your logic, applies some, some decision, try to advance the game once the decision appeared, and observe the outcome or provide the outcome for downstream. So basically, it's something we really need. And what we can do, we can use, for example, Project Reactor API and use transform in order to say, okay, this is our game engine. We get here a flux. So let's put this flux, let's, let's give it, let's supply this flux of actions to, to our game engine, and it's gonna be working. And even so, we can, even more, we can simplify and replace it with just a link, which is more functional approach. And afterwards, we transform our, our stream to a stream of outcomes, which means that now, during to our machine learning algorithm, we have to, to, to gain some knowledge. And we have to supply this outcome, for example, for learning service. And again, it's pretty useful because at some point in time, you can play the Pac-Man. And this, this, your actions, your observations will be supplied to machine learning algorithm, will be uh, processed and will be stored. So then, once you played for a while, using real human, you can reuse this knowledge for, for your kind of automated, um, for, for your automated algorithm, which is also useful without changing anything. So here we need again to transform data, and now we have to use learning service, which basically l l looking for flux of outcomes and produce a flux of knowledge that we, which we can store afterwards. So basically here we are using, okay, 
learning service, learn, and then we have to store our knowledge in our knowledge base, which is basically knowledge, knowledge repository. So we are doing the same, like, for example, as knowledge repository and educate. This is what we are trying to do. I'm using as because our, in our case, we're just storing data and we don't expect any outcome from, from our repositories. That's why our repositories say, okay, I'm just returning the future, which gives you an ability to wait for, for the end of the stream or end of the game. It doesn't matter. For our case, we are not interested in the, like, in the fact that data stored, so we ignore all of them, which is fine. And Project Reactor gives us ability to, like, to, to, to switch to Mono from Flux. All right, that's basically it. And once we are going to try to, to run it, so there is no uh, magic so far. Okay, let me let me stop it for a while. Not that's not something I wanna do. I wanna I wanted to 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 do what I wanted to do. Wait a sec. Yeah, I wanted to remove this stuff, and I wanted to copy these distances. Yeah, before the session, we we ran some some stuff required for generated generating the 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 new maze. So it's important to, to, to have a correct maze for, for our map. And now we can run the game and hopefully it's gonna, it gonna work. Now it didn't, why? So as usual, no point to exception, perfect. That's something I, I wanted to, to get, amazing. <laughs> I like it. Um, let's try to run it again. Just in case, please work. Okay, let's run it with Gradle. Please, th let's try to do that. Um, small delay, and yeah, let's try. Let's try again. Run it. All right, it's working. Much better. So now. I'm welcoming everyone to, to get back to, to the game and figure out whether this stuff working or not. We are not going into the details of the, of the implementation itself. It's pretty simple. You will be able to, to look at that afterwards since we are going to share the code. But try, right now, we have to check whether it's working or not at all. So basically, as you can see, we have Pac Mrs. Pacman, whatever number, random number connected to the game. So right now we have to, to go and see whether she's doing anything, right? That's right. Yeah. So we have like a compass on top. So let's try to find, we have lots of players, lots which is good. Oh yeah. oh yeah, someone caught it. So it's basically working. I'm not sure whether it's working pretty good because this is just a beginning. Yeah. And we got only just a few like knowledge into our knowledge base, which means that um, most probably our Pac-Man is a little bit dummy right now, right? right? It's not smart. And as you can see, it's just yeah. caught yeah. By, by Ghost again and again and again. But this all our knowledge, right? That's right. So, so yeah. now the question is, um, looks good, yeah. but, but it's slow it's because, slow. It, because the education right. process it's is... Um, it's, it's not that fast because we are playing online with real players and we can't just apply some offline education and then use this education afterwards. Yeah? We have right. to play with real players. So do you have any idea how we can, how we can improve that? Yeah, so um, how about using our socket to do it? Not yet? Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess maybe yeah. we can distribute all, it. We can distribute yeah, of yeah, course, sure. using some, yeah. some stuff. So basically what we can do, instead of using a single agent, right, which is, which is continuously learn new, learn new states, gain new knowledge, we can try to scale it, right? That's what we are doing in distributed system. We are trying to scale our services in order to improve performance. The same should work in our case, again. And we can use like a shared knowledge base. Previously, we, we used like in memory knowledge base. But now we can try to run a distributed service, store all the knowledge in this distributed service, and then reuse them again and again, which should improve the performance since we are playing by multiple agents, right? So the question is right now, how we can how we can do how we can connect like our agents using the same reactive streams and connect have the same like the same API and the same state of behaviors for our knowledge base. Basically, the answer is R socket, which is implementation of reactive streams as a network protocol, 
And you can use it like in different languages, so you can implement like uh, your um, knowledge base using Node.js, and you can implement your agent in JavaScript, in Java or Python, and you will have the same reactive streams be behavior, which is useful for us. The same, the same parting everywhere inside the code, as well as uh, over the wire. So basically, what you need to do, you have to, to, to create our socket connection with your game, which is already implemented using reactive streams. You have to create the same R socket connection to your knowledge base, and you will get the same reactive streams from end to end without any problems. So let's look at that. Let's, look, let's take a look at that, and let's see what we can do, basically. Um, let's go back. Basically, what we need to do is the usage of our socket. Our socket is a simple interface. It provides you with reactive streams from end to end, so you can use Mono, you can use Fluxes. In our case, we are interested in request channel because we want to send like a stream of actions from, from our agent to our knowledge base, and we expect that our knowledge base will enrich continuously, so we periodically will be able to observe some newer, newer set of, uh, of knowledge from it. Um, a part of that, our socket is pretty good integrated with RPC framework like Protobuf RPC. That's why of, uh, in, instead of just implementing API on your own, you can generate, uh, for example, API for your knowledge base. Or for example, if you're fan of Sprint, you can use Sprint. But in our case, the simplest would be using Protobuf RPS, generating our, um, our DTOs and our knowledge service. And in that case, we're saying, OK, let's enrich our knowledge base from the agent side, and let's listen for, for knowledge base snapshots, which is basically aggregation, some compaction, which could be run um, on, on a separate machine without involving the resources of current agent. So agent will be able to, to work really efficient, efficiently. So basically, we can generate the, the, the code using uh, the same protobuf generator, get the interfaces generated like this. So this is our knowledge service interface, which get flux and return flux. Perfect for us. And what we would need to do is basically build a remote implementation of our knowledge repository. And instead of using in-memory one, we are using in-memory one here. Instead of using in-memory one, we can use remote one, which is basically using the generated client. Perfect. That's what we want to use. And we don't have to rewrite anything. This is, as I say, this is reactive streams. So we have publisher, publisher, back and forth, and we don't have to rewrite our logic. We are using the same interface, and here we go. It just works. So right now, what we can do, we have to stop our agent, which is a single machine agent. All right, something went wrong, as usual. It says that the port, oh yeah, I have to run, I have to run a ser knowledge service. And as I say it again, we can write, since this is reactive streams, we can use any implementation. And we can write our knowledge-based service using Akka, for example, right? That's right, yes. Like Akka. diversity of technologies, why not? This is popular nowadays. So basically, we can, for example, use Akka streams and combine them with Project yeah. Reactor. That's yeah? right, yes. And uh, here we go, we can simply adopt reactive streams from Pro Project Reactor to Akka streams without any problems. Right. Perfectly OK. Oops. It turned okay. out. Something went wrong. <laughs> oh. All right, it works. Okay, good. good. Okay. So no problems. We are using here, for example, Akka streams flow, which is pre-compiled flow, which is a powerful feature of Akka. And it, it, and, and it should work. So let's run it and see whether it's working, I hope. Yeah, it's working. And right now, once we are going to run our Pacman simulator, we will see that um, it should connect to remote service and supply data to remote service. All right, it's running. Perfect. So once we go, go back to our game, we will see that yeah, we have a Pacman. Yeah. And now what we can do, yeah, it works. And we can see that it's slowly increase the number of knowledge, uh, of its knowledge. So what we can do in order to improve uh, the, the speed, we can run another agent. So we are running another engine, agent, and what we will see is gonna be run. Yeah, it's connected. We are running another one, because we can, why not? Yeah. And we are running another one <coughs> in order to make it super fast. And as you can see, like we started learning much faster yeah. as before. Yeah, much faster. And right now, you will see that we have at least two Mrs. Pacman on the game field. 
Yeah, let me decrease the size. Here we go, four. And they all are playing at the same time, and this is all separate, um, separate machines. Yeah, do you see? It works. That's right. yeah. yeah, it caught. Yeah. Perfect. That's right. So we distributed it. Okay, let's go back to our slides, and let's make uh, a, a small summary. That's right. So basically, we're again, we're demonstrating reinforcement learning. It's a really good model, and it's uh, it basically model, I should say, model less technique for continuous learning. So as such, you know, they, it handles like undeterministic kind of agents in this case, and ghosts and all these things that are happening. Yeah, so it's, it's, like, it's, a, it's pretty good. It's, it's good, used pretty good, good for, for a case where, where we have like online education, real time education with real players. So we don't have to, to, to pre-compile no, a huge model for a particular level. We can do that runtime, like without That's any, right. any pre-compiled material or, or knowledge for that, which is good. That's right. So. And then it fits very well too in, in this case for online Pac-Man because it's online streaming, it's all real time and kind of no yeah. need to remember as much. It doesn't consume as much memory as needed as it would be needed. And reactive streams reactive is a streams. good approach for us because as you have seen, we, the, 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 like the, the, the joystick or the controller mm -hmm. is a stream of actions. And as far as I remember, you can imagine the, the, the machine learning pipe as a pipe. So it could be like a continuation of machine learning pipe to your game. So it, it's, it's the same stream of, of knowledge back, which is moving back and forth. So it's the same paradigm. So exactly. we can reuse it. And uh, yeah. like, this is a good fit for, for reactive streams as well. Yeah, that's correct. I think it, we really want to bring it to, to another level, we'll put it into a cluster, make it even more yeah, like for in sure. the future as well. So yeah. All right. And uh, again. Yeah. If you, if you even so, you're gonna run, you're gonna try to run it on your local machine, it will be working as well, as good as, as in the distributed case without losing anything, which is That's cool. Right. Yeah. All right, this is basically it. We would like to share some, also some resources that we used in order to, to, to build this stuff. So you will be able to look more into, into the papers that we cover it as well. That's right. So a part of the paper, reactive stream specification, look at that, pretty, pretty good material. Uh, Reactive Streams Foundation uh, stands for R Socket. So if you want to learn more about R Socket, look at this page. Uh, some right. books. Some books on like machine learning. If you're not aware of it yet, this particular machine learning reinforcement learning book by Russell Stuart Russell and Peter Novick. Um, the chapter 21 is a really good chapter on reinforcement learning. Um, and then another one would be like by. Um, uh, Richard Sutton and Andrew Barto, that reinforcement learning and introduction to it too is this very good introduction. And then the other paper that we want to point out is in here that we talk about the case-based reasoning right. and the classic uh, K-game is, is this particular paper by the IEEE so members. So it's a pretty good so. paper. It's short. Take a look at that and you will be able to see how, how reinforcement key learning is, uh, is compatible with case-based uh, reasoning, which is useful and be used in, in this case for, for educating the agent and build the whole algorithm. All right. Yeah. A part of that, uh, it was to say that the whole, st uh, the whole stuff were run on IBM Cloud. You can get like everything for free. That's so right. all these things were run on IBM Cloud. IBM Cloud? Sense yeah. for, for that for IBM. Yeah. And uh, as far as I remember, you are sharing some knowledge about reactive streams and machine learning at, your, uh, at the newsletter. At the newsletter, that's correct. So for IBM, too, it's just we have newsletter, uh, there are AI machine learning topics, Watson and um, IoT, for example. So you're welcome to subscribe to this new newsletter and unsubscribe anytime to their own different topics. And Java, too, is what I also contribute to writing to the monthly newsletter. All right. And finally, all the, the whole application that were presented during this uh, uh, presentation is available by this latest link, so feel free to, to, to follow it and take a look at the implementation. And thank you for your attention. Thank and you. That's basically it. Thank you. Yeah.